Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to cut out hair in Adobe Photoshop. Now we're going to be doing this using channels and this is actually a re-record of a previous video. However, the other video was far too long and this is actually a really quick and easy process. So let's just jump into it. You can see on screen an example of the cutout that we're going to be creating. So lots and lots of detailed hair around the edges, all on a transparent background. So let's switch over to our tutorial document. This is the image we're going to be working with. It's a stock image with the subject shot against a plain background. So that's always a good start, but her hair is very, very detailed. So let's just zoom in and take a look at that. So to cut this out using tools like the magic wand tool, well, it's going to take a long time and it's not going to necessarily give the best result. However, we can use channels. So what we can do is go to our channels panel here. By default, it's next to layers. And if you don't see it, just go to window at the top and down to channels. And it will show you the RGB channel, which is what makes up this image on screen. But you can also click through the red, the green and the blue. And the goal here is to find the most contrast. So we want to have the kind of hair as dark as possible and the background as light as possible. So we could start with the red one. Okay, not bad. We can go to green, a bit better, a bit more contrast there, and blue. So ultimately, the blue has the best contrast between the hair and the background. So we're going to work with this one. So we can just drag a copy of the blue channel down to the new icon at the bottom and it will create a new channel called blue copy and you can double click the text and give this a name if you like and with this channel selected we're going to go up to image adjustments and down to levels and it will bring up this dialog box here now what we're adjusting is the levels for the channel not for any layers themselves and the goal here is to really increase that contrast so we selected the blue channel that was a good start so we're going to bring the highlights up and bring the shadows down. So we're not worrying about the actual image, we're just focusing on the hair. And we can zoom in as well. I'm just using command or control plus or minus to zoom in and out. And let's just focus on some of the hair there. Now we don't want this to be too extreme because otherwise it will look a bit a little bit coarse um, and you'll start to lose some of the detail so it's a case of finding a balance and just adjusting these sliders remember we're just focusing on the hair and you can adjust that midpoint as well there we go you can see just a little bit more detail in there so once you get something that you're happy with click ok and we've got a pretty good selection that we can now use to select the hair so what we can do is we have our blue copy channel. We can hold down command or control and left click on the channel thumbnail itself and you'll see that it makes a selection. And we can switch back over to our layers panel and what we can do is select the add layer mask icon from the bottom of the layers panel. And you'll see it will add a new layer mask. However, this is the opposite way round, but that's fine, we can fix that easily by going to image, adjustments and invert. The shortcut for that is Command or Control I, and it will invert that mask. And you can see we now have our subject cut out against a transparent background. And it's done a pretty good job because we took the time to make that selection using our channels. So we've made our lives a lot easier. However, it has caught the eyes. So the eyes and the teeth were the same color as the background. So we've, <laughs> we've lost that there and the necklace as well. Uh, you know it's kind of removed part of that but that's okay we can fix that so what we can do now is hold down the alt key and left click on our mask and it will show us it in this format so we can very clearly see what's been masked and what hasn't so it's done a fantastic job around here about catching all of those edges and what we're going to do now is select white as our foreground color select the brush tool and we're going to work with one of Photoshop's default brushes. And we're just going to paint white into that mask. Now you can quickly adjust the size of the brush, make it smaller or larger using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. So all of this face detail, we want to keep all of this. So everything that is black 
is going to be removed. Everything that is white is going to be kept. So we're going to remove the background and we don't want it to remove part of the necklace, the teeth and the eyes. So we're just zooming in really far. And of course you can spend much longer than this just to make sure that it looks fantastic. And if it looks fantastic when you're zoomed in, you know, 200%, then when you zoom back out, it's going to look perfect. So we'll just do this nice and quickly. You can see here, we've just got a few speckles. So let's just polish that up. We're just gonna paint white into that mask. It's just a few tones from the skin that got caught by mistake. But a lot of this uh, time can be saved by making a good selection when we're working with channels. So to take that little bit of extra time at the beginning is going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to refining this selection. Okay. There we go. So that's a pretty good job. A little bit of hair up there. Okay, fantastic. So once you've worked uh, in this mode and you've got your selection and it's looking great, you can hold down Alt, left click on that layer mask again and it will bring back your image. And what we can do is from the adjustments icon at the bottom, we can add a new solid color. And I've sampled this one from uh, rehearsing this tutorial. So we're just going to use this. It uh, kind of matches the tone of the lips and we can just drag that underneath. And I'm just going to lock this layer as well. Now you can see we have these kind of highlights all around the edges of the hair and it looks a bit rubbish and we need to work on that. So it's not a problem though. What we can do is select our layer. I'm just going to double click this and call this subject. And we can add a new layer from the bottom of the layers panel. And we're just going to call this hair retouch. And we're going to right click and select make or create clipping mask. And you'll see the arrow points to the layer below. So anything we do to this layer is going to apply to the layer below. And because the layer below has this mask around all of the hair, it's not going to extend out into the background. So we have our hair retouch layer selected. We're going to change the blending mode from normal to darken just to take care of these highlights. And we're going to select the clone stamp tool now you can select one of Photoshop's default brushes. I'm using a 300 pixel brush with a hardness of 0%, but feel free to experiment. And you want to make sure that you have current and below selected as the layers to sample. So it's going to sample this layer here and this one below. So let's just zoom in now. So we have our layer with a clipping mask, darken as the blending mode, and we have the clone stamp tool selected and we can see the brush here. When we hold down the Alt key, it changes to this kind of reticule and we can just sample an area of hair. So let's just left click and it will sample. So remember that's holding Alt and left clicking. And then we can brush that out here. So I'm just holding Alt, left clicking to sample, letting go of Alt, moving to the outside edge and I can just paint this in. Now, a lot of this hair, we already have the hair here, so it's not going to require too much work. You can generally quite quickly just brush over this and we're adding this all to our hair retouch layer. And we're just using the existing uh, tones and colors, quite literally sampling the hair that is already there and just using it with the darken blending mode just to kind of work over those highlights around the edge. So of course you can spend as long as you need to and you can adjust the size the same as you would with the brush tool using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. And I'd encourage you please do spend much longer than this but you can see here that actually it's done a pretty good job of taking those highlights and then masking them or covering them up with that hair retouch layer. And of course you can do this for the whole image and then ultimately, if you switch off that color layer, you've got the subject against the transparent background, or you can have a color layer, or you can add a photo, or you can add whatever you like behind there. And there we go. That's how to cut out hair in Adobe Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. 
Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.